This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Here we are on a really cold day in uh, Watford uh, and behind me as you can see there's a really big event that's kicking off now. Uh, a lot of people gathering and uh, a lot of Indian dance and a lot of Indian music, everyone dressed in uh, kind of a nice Indian attire to uh, celebrate their Indianness. I want to ask uh, all of you, uh, I can proudly, uh, I can uh, you know very uh, uh, safely say that this is a group of uh, really proud uh, Watford uh, Indians uh, who feel connected to India, right? Is that, is that right? Absolutely. Oh, let's go back to India. I was born in Uganda okay. and originally from Gujarat, my ancestors. Yeah. But obviously, as you say, we are all Indian. Yeah. Doesn't matter which part of the world we are born, yeah. we have that Indian connection. Indian connection, okay. And tell me, I mean, uh, here in Watford, uh, how strong is the Indian community? Are there lots of people from the Indian community here in Watford? I think as far as I know, they've been here since 1972 when the Ugandan Asians came in. Yeah. And that's where most of the Indian activities started. Right. Um, and um, yeah, I think we've, uh, we've known, we've made sure that uh, the community, the local community knows our presence. Mm. Uh, tell me, sir, you run uh, the Watford uh, Indian uh, Association. Yes. Tell me a bit about that. I mean, what, well, what, what, what do you all do? Actually, the Watford Indian Association in the current form, its roots go back to 60s, actually, even before what ah, Hema mentioned yeah. of the the Indian Asians or Asians in general coming from Uganda. Before that, Indians had come directly from India. At that time, the electrification of the railroads were actually routes were taking place. Actually, so a lot of script skilled workers actually came, and they were involved in the actually construction of the India, the British railways. They were doing actually electrification and all that work. Actually, and there was a small community based in Watford at that time which actually at that time became Indian Workers Association. Okay, so these are the original roots and one of the prominent workers who actually happened to be, uh, he's no longer now, but at least uh, uh, he was the councillor at the Watford Council. He even became a, a mayor of Watford Council, the civic mayor at that time, not the elected mayor. And he still actually wishes that Indian community flourishes. And one of the sort of uh, things we at Indian Association try to do yeah. is obviously bring all the Indian oh, community. But I really liked your, I, I really liked your uh, sort of nice historical sketch of this uh, small Indian workers community. I mean that uh, in the 60s, uh, just uh, it's one of those things that uh, you know really pleasantly kind of remind uh, remind you that you know wherever you may go in the world, even in a place like Watford, you know so many uh, miles away from London, there's always a thriving Indian community. Uh, tell me, ma'am, uh, do you uh, do you enjoy being part of the kind of Indian community here? Um, I'm very happy to be part of the Indian community. I represent Watford Hindu group here um, and we cater for all the Hindu celebrations, Navratri, Diwali and things like that we celebrate. Okay. We also run a Gujarati speaking school nice. which is very successful at Watford Boys. Okay. Um, and we, we teach to Gujarati, we teach Gujarati up to GCSE standard and we, we encompass all people to come. We have non-Hindus and non-Indians coming to learn as well Gujarati, yeah. so that's... So very much in keeping with kind of the Hindu yeah. spirit, right? That you, you're welcoming to everyone. Very yeah. much so, very much so. And, um, you know, it, it's a case of showing other people that, you know, the Hindu community is one and we're all together and yeah. we all work together to bring about such a lovely event like this. Okay, very nice. Uh, well, what about you, ma'am? I mean, when you hear all of these, uh, uh, you know, stories and you hear all of this, uh, how, what does it, uh, how does it make you feel? A lot of us work as volunteers and it's great yeah. to bring the culture into all these different events yes. and I think it's so, such a good idea. Religion and, uh, you know, language and, and things, everything that makes culture. But uh, how easy is it or how difficult is it, I should say, to, you know, kind of recreate that here in England. Because a lot of people who are born here, especially the younger generation, they have no connection at all with India. You know, I mean, they never lived in India. They go maybe, you know, sometimes for a vacation. How, how difficult or easy is that? 
I think as uh, Raj mentioned, uh, the Gujarati school has held young people together yeah. and right from the age of, uh, what, five plus, uh, they are introduced to history of India, they are introduced to the culture of India, to the religious aspect of India. Okay. So I think... Uh, Let me ask you a bit about actually, about the class. I mean, yeah. uh, how do the students respond? Do they often tell you that... Uh, Gosh, why are we having to learn about a country that we have no kind of, you know, uh, almost no kind of uh, direct sort of, uh, you know, uh, connection with? Or, or do they tell you that, hey, this is interesting, this is about a different you know, the culture that kind of, you know, I have roots to? I'll tell you something very funny. I'm actually born and brought up in this country. I can speak and understand Gujarati perfectly well, but I can't read and write. Really? Okay. My children that are second generation born here, they understand, they won't speak, but they can read and write our language. So when we go to India, they can read for themselves the road signs, the, the um, signs outside shops nice. and nice. things like that. They can also converse with their grandparents who can't necessarily speak English. Yeah. And that's and a is very that because of the Gujarati class? Um, uh, yes, yes, that is a direct result yeah. and it also gives them a very strong connection with the culture yeah. and that's so important for our children to be in tune with the culture, yeah. don't you think? Okay. You know, recreating Indian culture here in, in Watford, how, how easy or difficult is it? It has not been easy, okay, it has been a tough journey, okay, but uh, since we all settled at, at uh, various stages in Watford, because of that Indianness, and we want to actually maintain and actually flourish our Indian culture and then hope that actually even the next generation and the generations after that continue our traditions. What's the toughest bit about this? The toughest first is actually obviously to realize the politicians here, okay, that we are all taxpayers of Watford, okay, we all pay taxes and then in return, until few years ago, there was hardly anything for other than the sort of mainstream community, okay, nothing for ethnic minorities. Anything we wanted to do, any celebration we wanted to do, we had to just rely on our own self. It's only last four or five years actually, the event which started at Palace Theatre, that came about actually because of the pressure of actually them to be more multicultural. This is a fantastic, this is a fantastic point you brought out actually. Tell me, yeah, please, well, do add to this. Um, just, just to add to what has already been said, yeah. um, all of us do this on a voluntary basis yeah. and that just shows how dedicated we all are to our culture. In the, in the backdrop you can hear some nice uh, sitar and tabla playing and uh, that's because uh, a lot of people have gathered here from the Indian community. Uh, it's, a, it's part of a celebration. Uh, Indian community here in Watford, strong community? Yes, it's getting more and more stronger. Um, I came to live in Watford about 15, 16 years ago where there wasn't that much of the um, Indian community around. However, there is lots more Indian people moving to the area. Yeah. We've got fantastic schools in the area, you know, and lots more Hindus are getting together to, um, and we're doing various things together as well. Okay. And it's important for my children. I've got three daughters and one son. Yeah. So I feel culturally strong that the, yes, they should know their culture. So is that, is that your daughter? This is my daughter. Okay. And my youngest and my son and then my old, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me, I mean, uh, when, when mum says, uh, you know, you should, uh, go and do some Indian activities and you know here you are dressed in Indian uh, tricolor uh, colors uh, what, what, what do you say to her? I say yes it's okay because yeah. we always do it and it's now like a tradition for us yeah yeah okay and uh, tell me uh, ma'am uh, what uh, why are you dressed in these Indian colors today? Uh, we're dressed because we're going to be doing a dance in the parade oh nice nice what dance are you going to do um, Bollywood what uh, on what song um I can't remember. You can't remember? Uh, what, what song is she performing on? Do you know? Um, um, she's performing on Gunji um, Anganame Shehenai and um, the last song, which is Ganpati Bapa Moriya. Oh, very nice, very nice. And uh, tell me, uh, sir, uh, you, you keep in touch with uh, in your Indian roots, Indian culture? Yeah. How do you do that? Um, we go to um, places like Pandava Shaka and and we um, learn, um, learn about our culture because we're Indian. How do you keep in touch with your Indian room? Um, we, we go, I've been to the Shaka once. Uh -huh. um, what we do there, we, like play, we play games, we do activities, and uh, then we learn, at the end, we learn about the cultures. Tell me, ma'am, in terms of uh, accessing 
uh, you know, this kind of recreating kind of Indian culture here in Watford, how easy is it? Well, we've got the um, Watford temple that we go to, mm -hmm. the Hare Krishna Mandir that we go to. There are other temples that are quite near to us. You've got the Nisdan Swaminara temple, the Stammo temple. Yeah. So, and then we've got a um, Shaka Pandya family that we go to every Friday where we play various games that could be from Mahabharat as well. Yeah. So there's lots of um, things that they have got access to. Okay. It's obviously making you wanna, it You want to add to that? Yeah. Um, and in Shaka, at the end, we always learn about the Mahabharata. Oh, nice, nice. What do you like about the Mahabharata? Um, it's very interesting on all the stories that happened Yeah, before. and there's always some kind of learning at the end of it. Yeah, there is, yeah. There's a, a real build-up to a really big event here. But as you can uh, see in, in, in my backdrop, people clapping and doing lots of things uh, on stage. But very uh, soon, uh, y'all are also going to be on stage and uh, what, 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 what do you all call yourself? Y'all are the Riddhi Siddhi girls. Yeah, right? we're the Riddhi Siddhi girls on behalf of the stall we've also done. Okay, and, and what do you call yourself? We're the Indian Knights. Indian Knights, very good, very good. And uh, and, and tell me, uh, so y'all are part of a dance group, is that correct? And uh, y'all are dressed in uh, uh, Indian national colours. Tell me a bit about, uh, what, 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 you know, what is this Riddhi Siddhi group all about? Well, we're a group that we've performed before. Well, me and Keshni, we have performed before at a surprise birthday party. And we heard about the event and we thought it would be quite nice for us to perform. Mm. We all enjoy it dancing, all five of us, and it's a passion of ours. Yeah. And it, it's fun. Okay, yeah. and, and you all mainly do kind of what? Bollywood dancing, is yeah. that right? A mixture of Bollywood and a mixture of like Indian fusion. So it's kind of like Garba style and also Bollywood. Okay, so Garba meets uh, Bollywood meets Western meets... Uh, uh, anything else that the crowd may like. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay, and, and, and y'all choreograph this whole thing? Yeah, yeah, me and Keshni both done it. She does dance for GCSE mm -hmm. and I just love dancing. Okay, okay. You don't do dance for GCSE? No. no. I do parents, PE. Parents said, no, 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 do something more No, no I do PE. Okay, PE. Okay. And uh, let's let's speak to the Indian Knights. So, uh, what, what, what are the Indian Knights all about? T tell me. Well, so. we're Indian, so yeah. Okay. And, um, where does the night spot come from? Do you all come riding on horses or something like that? Nah, no. we, if we'd hoped to, but we can. <laughs> um, but we're just like boys, so we thought knights would be a, a name for it. Okay. Like, what, and what do you all do? It's a dance group or a no. singing group? Or yeah. We sing the Indian national anthem. Mm. Okay. And and tell me, how did you get involved in all? Of um. Well, we go to like a uh, band of Shaka and a Gujarati school, and we just like all met each other and like. So we just formed a group. We so, also yeah. do Hinduism for GCSE. Right. Okay. And like every Friday we go to Shaka and we have a lot of fun. So yeah. we just thought it'd be a good idea to. Okay. Like, Tell me a bit about Hinduism for GCSE. What is it like? Is it uh, is it uh, uh, what, what are your kind of takeaway from from Hinduism? It's good. It's you you take away about your own like our own culture. Yeah. We're learning about what um how like what gods there are, mm -hmm. how they came to be gods yeah. and. Um, how like, it all came about. What's that? How, how it all came about. Yeah. How the world was created and everything like that. Okay, okay, very good. And tell me, I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, y'all you all, you know, live here, obviously, and, uh, uh, you know, y'all go to school here. Uh, what is your connection with uh, with Bollywood? I mean, do you get to watch a lot of Bollywood movies or is it something that your parents do? Are y'all Bollywood fans? Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, we're definitely Bollywood fans. Um, we obviously meet up every so often and go and watch an, a typical, like, Indian Bollywood movie yeah. at the cinema. Yeah. And that's where we get our lift, different ideas of dancing and ah, it kind yeah. of inspires us. Right, right. So who's your uh, who's your favorite dancer in Bollywood then? Dancer? Yeah. Um, Prabhu Deva. Yeah. And I love Ganesh. She's big, but he can still dance. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you do one thing? Show me one or two of your favorite moves. While you're doing your moves, uh, explain to us what you're doing, okay? It starts off with us kind of coming in like this. Uh -huh. And then we spin out. And we go one, two. And then we double spin. And both hits our backs and go up, down, and then back, down. Okay. And then Okay. Yeah. Are, are you going to teach me some of these moves? <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Okay, right. Okay, so what happens first? So from this side, yeah. you start here with your left leg out, left leg and you go like this, and you move, work your way in. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have the microphone. <laughs> but maybe, may, maybe after the uh, after the second. Uh, so here we are in Watford. Uh, if you're ever around in Watford and you want to uh, really uh, watch some young, enthusiastic people performing Bollywood songs, uh, you know, you should uh, come down and. Uh, have a look at what Riddhi Siddhi girls are up to. And after that, if you're in a bit of a serious mood, 
then you can always sing the uh, national anthem with the Indian Knights here. Thank you all so very much for joining us.